Welcome to the In General Podcast, episode 93. My name is Jack, and on this episode, I am joined with Assis. Hello. I was watching Ryan, sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan. Hi. He's here. We're uh, Visually, we're on Skype. You, you can't see the visuals because you're not paying for the exclusive Outpost membership, but we are on Skype viewing each other. Welcome to the In, in General Podcast. We have, uh, we have a few things to talk about today, but this is the first time Ryan's been on in a long time. It... It's good. Well, yeah. I think it's like a annual thing now for me to come back. This is the one we get. This is the one a year. <laughs> it's an annual thing for the podcast to return. It's like the in general podcast is back, and then, and then it disappears for three. And years. it features Ryan one. Yeah. The and one then time. it's the same deal. It's like Ryan's back, and then you won't hear from him again for another year. <laughs> He's a busy. But, uh, it's so funny because like I, like I was telling my wife, or, uh, Missy, you guys, you know, my wife, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> that like I have a wife, guys, like. <laughs> My social, my online social presence um, on Twitter w- started off very much just 100% Jurassic. Like, I was strictly online on Twitter to talk about Jurassic. It's how I found you guys. Um, and I was very much involved with, like, you know, the pod and stuff. And then as soon as I kind of, like, branched into the art career, now it's completely flipped. And my my online presence, if anybody knows, is, like, mostly art. I'm the illustrator. So then to step back into like the Jurassic shoes is like, oh man, like it takes me back. It's such a nostalgic <laughs> feeling Where's because like, you know, we always talk about like Jurassic whenever it comes back. It's like, it always brings back those feelings, but nothing brings back the feelings like hanging out with my boys <laughs> from the outpost. The OG Philly trip. Oh boy. That OG Day Philly, Philly trip. Go down Day in history. Philly. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he's doing so well, funny. man. I hope he's still alive. <laughs> I hope he's still alive, Ryan says. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Philly, Dave Philly weed. But seriously, that that was a damn good trip. We talk about it every opportunity we can. So like awesome. the five of us, yeah, Alex and Chris as well. Like none of us had ever met before. Just yeah. being like, yeah, let's live in a house together for <laughs> for however long. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a damn good trip. Yeah, I forgot whatever her name. Uh, Amazing. Our, our Airbnb. Oh, your or oh, the Airbnb lady? I do not remember. This is this is your yeah. I just remember now. her emailing me the next day, <laughs> and me having to awkwardly be like, "Hey, apparently we're too crazy." But <laughs> yeah. and we had Derek in the basement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, random Derek. Old Derek. <laughs> um. So we have. There isn't much to talk about that in terms of news, right? But there is some exciting things. So I don't know if you guys. I woke up this morning to uh, Universal Beijing. Jurassic World Adventure ride. Uh, somebody put up a POV. Uh, I think there's two POVs. I don't know. There's two recordings of the ride, but it kind of blew people away because it's better than anything this side of yeah the world um, or the flat Earth, depending on how you look at it. Oops. Um, it's it's uh, it looks pretty damn sick. I don't know if you remember the. I don't know if you ever got to play it. Was it Dave and Buster's? It was like a Jurassic World VR simulator thing, and you get dropped down into Nublar, and you're with like a military team, and you just go through the island. It kind of has vibes of that, where everything is from Jurassic World, but it suddenly feels way more gritty and real, and like. Now I haven't seen this video yet because my technology skills are not adequate to watch videos. Tell me, is it is it <laughs> is it like a a group race ride, or how does it work in terms of so the ride? It seems itself? like you're in a. Um, Boat? Seems like you're in a... Are you in a boat? Is it like River Adventure style? You should be. You're in a... I, you're in some... I don't know. I thought You're it was in a boat. some form of something that's moving, right? Are you in a group? Pretty impressive. We'll go the group of yep. thing, right? There's a group of we'll activity? Part. Or is it a solo activity? It's a group thing. I don't believe it's like <laughs> VR or anything like that. It's real. Mm-hmm. Um, and you go out and you kind of... It starts and you're driving through and then all of a sudden you get this amazing reveal of what the Jurassic World Valley, I guess you could call it. Yeah. You can see the aviary you can see parts of the park but it's like during the disaster right things are going wrong already at this point yeah it's like it's like you're in a it's like you're a random tourist to me like that's being evacuated off the island during the events of jurassic world and you are probably you're in you're either in a raft or it's definitely safe to say you're in a moving vehicle of some sort (laughs) that's (laughs) that's that's escorting you maybe um and so, but it's taking you through different, obviously different familiar scenes throughout the Jurassic World movie. So yeah, you go around the corner, there's the, there's the map, 
you see the aviary, the, the helicopter is getting attacked by the ter- uh, pteranodons. Yeah, the sky uh, is gorgeous. It's dust. Yeah. Like, come it's, on, that looks incredible. So it follows the storyline of the movie then, right? <clears throat> I, th- I believe so. Much, it is yeah. during the Indominus Rex breakout. So you have the anim. I- is that an animatronic or do you think that's part of the visuals, the brachiosaur that pops up? Oh, this sounds so cool. Uh, it is cool to see. I didn't, see, I didn't see specifically, but there's definitely a mix of animatronics and the, the 4K, yeah. uh, or I don't know if it's 4K, I'm imagining it's 4K, but uh, the digital screens in the back. Yes. Um, so you go through, you see ACU vehicles driving down the valley with the lights flashing, and you turn back in, um, and you see lightning strike, what a Jurassic World gate. And this is where, I believe, you get the Indominus Rex. So the Indominus mm-hmm. Rex comes out, it's the animatronic, it looks perfectly like the one wow, in the movie wow, wow. genuinely does look really good it's kind of motionless a little bit but the whole like the it's stationary where it stood and then it roars and it's head moving but it doesn't look like the animatronics of the jurassic park ride if you remember that like <laughs> dude the jurassic yeah. road ride i don't know if you guys seen the updated version of the indominus it looks fucking tight <coughs> it looks really good now yeah it's good movement and everything. the one at universal uh, hollywood exactly yeah I gotta ride that soon. Yeah, because they did update that. Um, Yeah, they took it offline for a little bit or refurbished it or something already. Yeah. It's a shame that all they kind of did was refurb that ride, though. You know, the Jurassic Park River Adventure. They just kind of refurbed it to Jurassic World, which, I mean, like... It's cool. Yeah. It made sense. Uh, We still got the old... We still got the OG River Adventure down in uh, Orlando, though, so hopefully that never goes away. Yeah, they they need to pump some money into that though. Yeah, they do. They, they yeah. a little bit of upgrade. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, um, yeah, I was gonna say like the one in or, or Anaheim needed refurbishing anyway. Had they done it just like classic Jurassic, you know, that's one thing. But it's interesting that they didn't do it Jurassic World in Orlando and kept the original JP ride as JP. You know, instead they kept, they kept the Orlando one. And and to me, I feel like you'd have better success. Uh having the Orlando ride be Jurassic World. Um, in, but from what I've heard uh, sense, yeah. about the, the new ride in Anaheim, like I thought you know, it's pretty sick. And from what I've seen too, like it's, I mean, it's cool. It's definitely, it's definitely an upgrade for sure. Yeah. Did you go through like the Mosasaur tank or something like that? Mm-hmm. At the very start. Yeah. I mean, and, and to be fair, they've got like a good, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's essentially like the same mix of what this Beijing ride is of, using the, the the digital screens and animatronics but this is definitely mm. like darker and i think way i don't know uh a little more immersive higher budget perhaps? in terms of like in terms of like the actual scenes throughout the film uh, we, yeah it's, we compared it's... it to like um uh harry potter in universal if you've oh, read if you've written the harry ride. potter ride in universal One of the, best the combination ever. of that <laughs> Um, can, I, can I take an aside here? I, you know, you brought up Harry Potter. This is your fault. Um, I, sorry. Growing up, right? Oh, British guy in Harry Potter. Really, classic. Never really cared for Harry Potter. I saw the first three as a really? kid and was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah never cared for okay. it. Never, never watched anything past the third. Okay. And in my adult life, I years ago, I've tried to watch them again. I got up to number three mm-hmm. and just stopped watching. Yep. wasn't interested. For some reason, a couple of weeks back, I was hungover. Happens. Sunday morning. Happens for sure. I want to watch Harry Potter, the first one. This is wild. Just, nothing inspired it. Uh, well, maybe something inspired it. Subconsciously, I was like, boom, Harry Potter. It's Harry Potter time. I watched the first one, adored it. We watched the second, adored it. Third one blew my mind. Prisoner uh, of Azkaban is the best. No, it's, it's not. It's so crazy. It's such a drastic style change. And I get it, you know, um, Alfonso. Great. But I get it. But Jesus Christ. Did you make it past three this time? I am on the Deathly Hallows Part One. Wow! And oh boy, I have it's. I am so obsessed with Harry. Oh, yes, right. dude. <laughs> I've become this big fan. You want to know why? I love it. I'm now, obsessed. It's, it's a Canadian influence. Canadians love Harry yeah, Potter. Yeah, seriously. It's all it is. I yeah. understand, man. It's like I'm almost sad. You missed that out. I missed out during my childhood of being a fan of Harry Potter because it's so fucking good. Dude, it's and incredible. It's like, Dude, number four wasn't great, right? But Aura of the Phoenix, I like that I one struggle. That might be my favorite over yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. the third one. Absolutely. My third one's the favorite, like the style change, the seriousness, just the way it was shot, the one shots, the long takes, just, oh my God, yeah. give it to me. Like, that felt like a real rendition of what the, is written in the books. But Aura yeah. of the Phoenix was so good. It's the best one. And dude. then 
And then Half Blood Prince, the same deal. I was like, what the hell? This movie's <laughs> yeah. awesome. And then yeah, so I got Deathly Hallows Part One and Two to watch, and then I'll, I don't know. You're gonna be a, I, a teary mess by the end of this. Yeah, seriously. Uh, so you've only seen the films. I've only seen the films. Yeah, I've never read the books. Yeah, like I read them in school. Like, like everybody read them in school. Yeah. The yeah. if you, I mean, so like after the films, like after you process everything, uh, you know, reading is one thing. I love books. Um, I have a. I never like <clears throat> got on that cancel train with Harry Potter, but I have it because I'm not going to probably read it anytime soon. So I don't really like care about what it means to me now. But I have a fondness of it. Because in high school, I didn't really read it as a as a, or I didn't read it when it first came out. But I, I I caught it in high school, and then like every, I caught it like right when it was Order of the Phoenix, mm-hmm. not Order of the Phoenix, yeah, Order of the Phoenix came out. That's when I caught into it, mm-hmm. and then like I read a book each summer that I worked at a summer camp, and so I kind of had like this like nostalgic like ah reading Harry Potter in the woods, which is like honestly to me no better <laughs> thing in, in the world. But if you get the chance. Listen to the audio books because I forget his name, but he's like world renowned and he does all like there's so many characters in that universe and he voices every single one of them differently and brilliantly. And it is so good. And to me, it's a completely different like. I wish like there was something like that with Jurassic because like it's like list it's I don't don't know. It's like it's like watching it from one director's point of view and then watching it from another. You know, like same story. Everything happens, you know, but like it's like the way you get immersed in the like in the audio. Anyway, the audio book is good. Well, tell me, Ryan. I may have to do that. So, You're yeah. not the first you, person to say this is it. Check the books. I love good audio books, like, man. Yeah. Okay. So audio books. Hey. Jurassic Park. But the ride to, in to, Universal to, is also coming yes. back. For people. <laughs> the segue. So, so, so we rode that at JP25, right? Yeah. And. I like wasn't a Harry Potter fan, didn't care for Harry Potter, but I had a great time on that ride. Like I remember it being so immersive, and you like get, you know, um, you, you're on like a, what are you? You're sitting. Something, you're like a mechanical right? arm or something. You're like in like yeah, you're sat seats. like in something. Yeah. Uh, um, like you're three playing three of you in a seat a or something. Wasn't <laughs> weren't you next to kids a seat? Oh no, that was The Simpsons, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I got off the ride, started throwing up. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. scaring the hell out of these kids. Oh, jeez. Um, but the Harry Potter ride, I remember you. Like, you're, you're shoved right up close to, like, animatronics and, like, that You are literally spider. shoved. Yeah, and then you fly through the Quidditch field. Oh, dude, oh I'm getting, God. like, but chills wanna... thinking about it again, dude. I know. Now I like Harry Potter. I'm <laughs> like, God, I wish yeah. we could go back to Universal and just live in that world. I wouldn't leave. You're going to buy all the wands I wouldn't and shit. leave. Yeah. I remember we buy thought it was so dope. We wrote it, like, at least three times, but... <laughs> It was that one. I'll never forget, like coming out of it that third time, and then getting the butter beer. Remember what happened and after turning that? Around, and then like there's Colin Joe yeah. or Colin Jost, <laughs> Colin Trevorrow, <laughs> Colin Jost. Um, they look very similar. Gareth yeah. Ed- Gareth Edwards and um, Jordan Jordan Voigt Roberts. Yeah. Like all three of them walking down like Diagon Alley, and we're like, uh, holy shit! Remember, no holy Colin like, was like. Look! Look who it is! And then Colin sees us, and he's like, "Oh, hey!" And just like walks up to us. We're like, "Whoa, hey!" That was wild. <laughs> hey! Didn't he say like it's the outpost or something? It's Jurassic it's outpost. the outpost, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Meet Gareth Edwards, Jordan. Just and like, we're just like shaking surreal. their hand, drinking butter beer. Gareth Edwards really is like, like your <laughs> sipping his sipping his drink as he's shaking our hands, not saying anything, just like hi, hi, hi. I don't know who you are, but hi. Yeah, we're like hi. That was wild. Dude, that was so God weird. Damn. I can't wow. wait to go back. That yeah. was an experience. JP twenty five, man. That was a great. That was a yeah. great event. Great experience. Got to hang out with Steven. Love Steven. Steven Ray Morris. Love Steven. Lots of good people. But it makes it, yeah. I want to go back. I want to go back to Universal and live in Harry Potter land for a bit. Next year, baby. Like I want to Next set year. up camp. You know. Well, here's literally the, just do live, what Marv so and Harry do in 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 Home Alone and just kind of set up shop, mm-hmm. Be a like sneak guy, in, then. and we just stay the night. Nobody knows. I mean, I think you're gonna have to, man. I mean, uh, <clears throat> at this point, I'm gonna set up like Potter Outpost or something like that. You know, like, <laughs> who wants to uh, come on board and ride the Harry Potter 
the blue car from number two. All right, guys, this is the end of the Jurassic Outpost. Outpost. We're shifting focus. We're going Potter. Out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was shifting Obviously, focus. <laughs> so many people right now are like, I, "Why are we talking about Harry Potter?" Like, how you're like, on the wrong podcast, folks. This is there's Potter, a good. Potter there's probably podcast. a good percentage of people who have like hit the 15 second fast forward button and they've gone like five minutes in advance. They're like, they're still talking. Here's the thing about that, Harry that's Potter. That's the Jurassic Outpost tangent <laughs> style, dude. That's our style. <laughs> It is. I mean, how could we not do a podcast and not talk about Harry Potter at this point, since we're all such massive fans of it? <laughs> <But> <laughs> seriously, wow. Yeah, blow my mind. I can't wait for the Deathly Hallows Part 1 and 2, and then can't wait to be super sad when it's all over and there's no more. And even Fantastic Beasts has got, like, poor reviews, so I'm not even going to... Well, it's still cool, though. Is it, though? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Nah. Is it uh, a cease? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, nah, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll check it out. But, <laughs> but the ride... Yeah, the ride is dank and it certainly reminded me of what well, the jurassic world Aha. <laughs> reminded there me of that harry potter ride nice one nice one the tangents over for uh, guys you can you can come back we know how to bring jurassic it back again. though let's bring it back <laughs> <laughs> uh so the indominus rex animatronic chases you uh, which is right. pretty cool actually it looks pretty terrifying especially the way they light that you know they're only lighting the upper half of it because it's obviously on wheels or something um it chases you, you get ACU vehicle, and then... Ankylosaurus. Get... Ankylosaurus, nice. you see the East Dock sign. <laughs> and that's an animatronic, by the way. <laughs> animatronic East, East Dock sign? No, the animatronic... <laughs> Ankylosaurus is animatronic, and it looks dang good. Yeah, the Ankylosaurus is good. East Dock sign, even better. Um, you get Jurassic World vehicles, you get the... I believe that's the Raptor containment yeah. unit. Gyrosphere crashed. You see Chris Pratt on his moped uh, with, um, you know, doing, I don't know, spinning his wheels in the mud and driving off with the raptors in tow. Very cool. And then you see Bryce Dallas Howard. You see Claire. Claire Deering. Mm -hmm. Heard of it. And she, she <laughs> heard of it. She lights a flare, does her flare thing, runs off in heels, no less. Mm -hmm. uh, raptors, raptors follow her for some reason. but T-Rex animatronic yeah. looks Good, you guys. Yeah, so what does it do? It smashes through glass? Oh, no, the T-Rex comes out, fights the Indominus. That wow, looks that different than really the... Than the, than the uh, I think either Universal, um, LA and Orlando. That's like a, that looks like a legit... A legit, legit JP T-Rex? Like, yeah, seriously <laughs> does. It looks dang good. So does the, so does the uh, Indominus. But like, I feel like... There's so much. There's so much of the Indominus, like animatronic everywhere, statue, whatever. That like I don't know. It's hard to get wrong at this point. It's. I, don't, I feel like yeah. it is hard to get wrong. We're we're yeah. so picky about the Rex and the way she looks. You better make sure she has those dark circles around her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the dark circles? Hey man, like, it worked for oh whoever whoever wanted it though. It's there now. But no, seriously, where were the dark <laughs> circles? Work. I'm I was definitely team darks. I'm like <laughs> team the, dark where, circles. Where the That's dark a shirt circles? right here. <laughs> Do you not know that she has dark circles around her eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> anyway. Um but it looks good. And then the Indominus Rex smashes some glass, virtual virtual glass, don't worry guys. It's a lot of money. And then you see the main street fight which is honestly pretty incredible like it just looks so real. Claire throws the animatronic directly at the Indo. Sorry, throws a flare. <laughs> What's going it's on quite. Here? It's actually quite she silly. Throws, she throws a whole Indominus Rex animatronic at the T Rex. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and then it ends. Um, pretty damn cool, if I say so myself. And you know, I don't know. That's it's Beijing have done it. They've nailed it. And surrounding that ride is. Jurassic World Land, right? They yeah. have a whole Tyranodon area ride, and <laughs> who do we have to contact to get uh, the Outpost Boys over there to cover this? We should. We should be flown over there first class. At the very least, this. Universal number one fans. You've been following us for years, man. What's going on? <laughs> get in contact. Yeah, what is going on? You have our numbers. We're back on the podcast, and you haven't reached out. Unreal. This is crazy. Yeah. We want first class tickets as compensation, at the very least. <laughs> we want to go to Universal Beijing. <laughs> um, it does look incredible, though. I mean, that's 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 a ride to ride. Pun intended. See, here's the thing, man. I don't want to watch the video because 
I don't want the spoilers in case I do go one day. Like, I've, I've, I'm trying to stay away from, like, watching ride videos because I'm going to go there eventually, you know? I want to yeah. experience it. Well, so it's an interesting one because they just opened the Velocicoaster at Universal, and while that does look cool and it looks very cool, Samantha said something funny about it being in the uh, one of the Outpost chat groups about it looks like a Tron ride. And I was like, you know, that's actually pretty funny. That's true. It does look yeah, like Tron. Yeah. Does it? I thought it looked um, cool. like futuristic. It is like it Jurassic cool. meets Tron. But it's, <laughs> it's Jurassic meets Tron. That's the movie I want. Uh, but it's interesting because that ride looks like 10% of what this is. It's a different type and of I, ride, I though, man. Totally different type of ride. It's a roller coaster, right? Yeah. But yeah. It just, and But the only other thing they have there is the River Adventure, which also isn't as cool as this. And it does kind of make you think, well, maybe they really need to rehaul or Don't maybe they it. need to make some new, fill out some new land at Universal, kind of get something similar because this is a real ride. I mean, Jurassic Park, this, the, what's it called? This is a real ride. That's, not that, well, you said that's it. That's not that you pansy Velocicoaster. Right? That's going to be yeah, on no, the box for the, for like the next In terms of like the... Uh, this is a ride. In terms of this the interactiveness... It, but like I think there, I think Aziz is kind of right. Like you're you're comparing two different types of rides. Like you have a roller coaster to which there's no real way that you can have anything that's sort of visual speed. because everything is whizzing past you so quickly. So like you're obviously limited in what you can see. Yeah. But with this, this is obviously like a slow ride, kind of meandering through, and you get the different. But like I kind of want a combination of both. Like I was commenting on. Like, the Harry Potter ride is great. And, like, when we were talking about, like, it shoving you into a Quidditch match, like, that's what I loved about it is because it was like this, like, you sit in this thing, it lifts you off the ground, and then it kind of, like, ugh, it's janky, and it, like, push it, you know, it's like it, this this machine is, like, making you feel like you're actually moving. It's kind of like the California, soaring over California ride, but, like, gives you that 4D effect of, like, you're actually, like, flying, moving, um, where this looks more like a boat ride that's kind of made me a little more steady and still. I don't know if it, like, jinks around and you know the one in california has obviously the drop off and the waterfall which is the classic thrilling part uh and then this doesn't seem to have that as well it's more like just animatronic just kind of it's like a, it's a, like a show a to B, almost like. a show it's like a show yeah it's like a show <clears throat> yeah, so it's like a completely different ride it's it's just like if you want like the interactive this is probably the most interactive we've seen thus far uh of any sort of jurassic ride yeah definitely yeah, you're right. It's it's totally different type of ride to Velocicoaster, and I guess like River Adventure is the closest you can kind of get to that. But then it does make you think like River Adventure was built in '97, and all they did really was rehaul it in Hollywood mm -hmm. to be you know they reskinned it basically and they updated some of the features, but it's the same exact ride, yep. and it right. doesn't have the same interactivity as this Beijing thing. It just seems like Universal Beijing pumped so much more money, had so much more space to work with, and just created this thing that I think kind of stands out as the best Jurassic world ride currently and it's just sad i guess that this side of the world there isn't something like that maybe after um, dominion they'll be like oh it's time to overhaul like la studios and make it jurassic world themed fully now at this point yeah a new ride. it's just the, the, i think the only thing is like it's just because the harry potter ride the fast and furious ride the transformers ride the simpsons ride all of them were like this at universal Except Jurassic. Because Jurassic is so old, and, right? And arguably, it's their biggest property, right? Because it's it's just it's just age at this point. It's just like when it was built. It's all it is, I think, at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I can't close it down for too long. It's the wrong time to like close the whole area for a year because it's <laughs> the like new movie's coming out. Prime marketing right now for Jurassic. Um, God, I'm so excited. But yeah, it, it it does look like a really cool ride, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, um, at some point we can we can ride it. Universal it seems like a really cool experience. Get in contact, or it, yeah, I, it's like it, hmm. processing my thoughts in Anaheim because I I know Brad has like a pretty good idea of the Universal lot um, in Orlando, but like I wonder if there's room for expansion. Um, I want a Jurassic Land, man. Like you don't have to have just one ride at either park. Like you could have the classic kind of you know ride that's revamped as jurassic world but then kind of create this whole other sort of more like interactive and it doesn't even have to be the beijing like boat ride it's so crazy what you can do in 
a confined space. Like when we when you go to the Harry Potter ride, <laughs> it's in the Potter. castle. Yeah, sorry, but like when you, it, it's it's also like kind of like a, a great example of like it's in the castle. They've got this whole world right that they've mm-hmm. built yeah. in Universal um, or Diagon Alley and everything else. But like when you go into the castle to ride that Harry Potter <laughs> diagonally ride that, that we're <laughs> diagonally uh, that we're talking about. Um, it's not like you're moving in, it's not like there's like this huge lot. That's like this roller coaster ride. It's like, you're kind of like in this like little, obviously like well-constructed, well-crafted, uh, rendition replica of Hogwarts, but it's probably like a small house, like maybe 5,000, 6,000 square feet, which is, is, is like a couple of houses maybe put together. So like you build a ride within that, that just is like creatively can move from one corner to the other corner to the other corner. Obviously you have the, the, the visual uh, video aspect of it to give you that sort of like more wide open, you know, the big you're looking, projection screen. Yeah. So like, it gives yeah. you that, like, as long as you're immersed in it, like that's, it's the same thing with California soaring over California with Disneyland. Like you, you're literally like kind of just walking into this like theater room. That's got this cleverly crafted, a conveyor belt that like sits a row of 10 people per line and you're just sitting in front of this huge IMAX screen that blows f- wind and and orange yeah, fl- dude. like like they have one of those here soaring over Canada or something like that yeah, same deal it's just the same a, exact it, thing it's you, a 4D you effect. hang on this thing and it's a screen in front of you but you feel like you're going through the air and they splash you with water and it's, yeah it's and good. as long as like that machine that you're on like kind of just moves you up and down oh, three or like four feet this nightmare it gives you that feeling and that's all you need. So it's like Simpsons ride. Nightmare. Oh, geez. Anyway, but you could, you could definitely build upon it's like, you know, and especially as technology advances and stuff, like you can do a lot with confined space. So the moral being, but look at the King Kong ride at universal. You drive the tram into it and you don't move inside this thing, but it feels like you've gone a mile. Yeah. yeah well, not a mile, more than a mile. It feels like you've gone across Skull Island. I don't think I've been on right. that ride. You came on the tour. Oh, that one. Okay, well, I thought it was like a different ride. Yeah. yeah okay, okay, yeah. The one where you're on like the Universal Tram Tour and then it drives in and then all of a sudden you're getting attacked by two T-Rexes and a King Kong. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. Like, what if you were... What if it was like... <laughs> What's her... What is her name in Jurassic World? Zara? Zara? Who gets who gets picked up by the Pteranodons? It is Zara, right? I think it's Zara, yeah. yeah. So what if it's like her story, right? You walk into this room <laughs> and it's like... you walk And like you get... That'll they're like, okay... Well. They, they strap you in and you're like, oh, what's this for? <laughs> and you you get like first person perspective from her point of view. And all of a sudden you're lifted up by a pteranodon. And so it's like <laughs> you're getting that air. whole interactive. Yeah. And it's like you're getting shaken around and you get dropped. But then you get picked back up again as like another one swoops up and picks you up. And then you get like then you're underwater. Some <laughs> mist. Dead yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, some like mist splashes on you as you like are dropped underwater. And then all of a sudden there's like a Mosasaur going right in front cool, of you. Like, oh! That'd be very cool. Like that would be dope and scary but like hell yeah man not for hilarious kids. um like give zara some kids, you know some justification by I giving her her own kids. ride <laughs> the zara experience jurassic world the zara experience jurassic world i would i, <laughs> I would honestly that it. sounds that sounds great to yeah me. yeah i would that sounds ridiculous <laughs> Speaking of ridiculous guys, we got some dinosaur leaks to speak of. Ah, uh, he did it. He I did, did the it. transition. I'm back, I'm back to you. Everyone else is done. I want to do one too. So, Let's see if I can find the pictures. Yeah, you want to find the pictures? We have. Yes. Um, so now we are entering leak territory. We're not going to show any of these, but we're going to talk about them. So it's so whether or not you want to skip to the end. But um, quite a few things have leaked, and I have to. My my kind of take on this is, Jesus, if. Like, it's no surprise to anybody that there's going to be new dinosaurs in this movie, right? In a Jurassic World movie. I feel like the Shocking. production at this point should be revealing these dinosaurs, announcing them. Not like, like showing them maybe doing scene. it. Have Colin stood there with an animatronic of a new mm-hmm. dinosaur. Have Chris yeah. Pratt posing with a new raptor. I don't know. Have something. Or tease it in the film with a little clip or a little screenshot from the movie and be like, in Jurassic World Dominion will introduce the new something. And then... They get saved from poorly composited, badly rendered versions of the Jurassic World Dominion dinosaurs leaking via puzzles on Amazon. 
You know, like it's such a better reveal <laughs> if the filmmakers would reveal it themselves. Because again, it's no surprise that there's going to be new dinosaurs and new dinosaur species in this film. So just get ahead of it. It's it's like it's not a spoiler, really. You know. I get it, but like it'd be a good way to keep us occupied too, in between like these dead times of like nothing going on. Just like keep like, oh, Jurassic World Dominion is coming. Check out this new dinosaur for the new movie and sh- so, like things like that. I get what well, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, like yeah. The, the one of the T Rex, the badly rendered T Rex, the Parasaurolophus blue, and the other dinosaur, the I think I believe that's supposed to be the, the Atrociraptor, like on the jungle, and it's just like this really badly rendered 2015 era looking thing, but it reveals two brand new dinosaurs from the movie, but you're seeing them looking like they're not really stood where they're stood, and they're just stood next to other dinosaurs, and it's just like wait, who just looks crap, and it makes the movie look crap. Two new dinosaurs, or the new para. It's a new so para. it's a parasaurolophus, oh, well, which I believe is the new the render, yeah. Dominion. And my... then also the one on the right, which is like almost like a red. Uh, it's supposed to be a type of raptor, right? They have See, names the thing, apparently. Yeah. Um, we don't have Chris on this episode, so we can't. We have can't we talked the, about the names? The paleo I, guy. You have, go for the names, man. Tell us. Have I don't know. Well, crap. I should have looked it up, or or should have had okay. it in front of me. But it's like I, it's I like it. it's like. It's like a. It's obviously like a, a mirrored copy, like different the Raptor Squad thing. version of the Raptor Squad, right? But like it's um. Oh my gosh, I'm well, gonna butcher it. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I, I don't it. even I know. It. Yeah. So the white one, I'm assuming, is named Ghost. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The one, the one looks like a tiger raptor from the Lost World. It's probably named Tiger. The red looking dude, is probably red, and the fourth one, which we don't have a picture of right now, is. Pantera, Panthera, something like that, according to this leak, which may or may not be true. Let me get this. based off of an Amazon listing for figures that have, uh, that are coming out, and Mattel has yet to announce the, the figures or whatever. Pantera. That's the idea behind it. Such a rock star name. Pantera! Hell yeah. <laughs> so these, uh, if you remember, there was some Dominion, uh, when it was filming in Malta, there was some pictures where this guy yep. was walking around with two raptor heads on spikes. Right, the white uh, one. It was and a the... warning for other raptors that try and get them, you know? Yeah, we'll kill you, we'll behead you, and we'll have your head on a spike. But they were (laughs) styled like the JP3. One was like the the JP3 Raptor, and one was like the Lost World Raptor. And now they're shockingly close. To make sense, color skin wise, but they did have a distinction in their jaws. Like we can, they look different. They weren't raptors like as we know them. They were something they had like a yeah modified or. And everybody thought uh, it was assumes it's it's Deinonychus, which. I'm the th- still thinking in in theory. It's like it's 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 like the Velociraptor. We all know that by now that like the Velociraptor in in the Jurassic series isn't a true Velociraptor. So it's like this will be Deinonychus, but mm, I don't know. Called what is it called? Atro Atros Atrociraptor. Atrociraptor. The way you're an atro- says it. You're an atrocity. Is that a real dinosaur? Again, could be wrong. I don't know what it means. Atrocity? Uh, is that a real species? I don't know. <laughs> we have three guys who know nothing about dinosaurs on this podcast. Yeah, should we call Chris? Should we? <laughs> we should call yeah. I don't think that's a real right dinosaur. I, I, I'm, I, I feel like they, they find mm. these disasterly words like that sounds like Indominus Rex. Yeah, the Indominus um, Scorpion Rex. The Scorpion. You're, you know, so you're an atrocity. So Diabolus Rex. What, what sort of vicious dinosaur? Well, you're an atrocious raptor. You're an atrociraptor. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, let's go with it's that. It's an atrocity. It's an atrocity. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's what it is. But it's like, okay, but it, we can just call it maybe what it is. It looks like a dinosaur. Just a raptor. Oh, yeah, or a dinosaur, sure. So here's the thing, story though, like, wise, I mean, colors, sorry, like, go ahead. The colors see. definitely mean something, right? Like, there's no way those are like, there's no way like they pick things that look like the female raptor from JP3 and then the tiger raptor. There's no way, right? So uh, an interesting theory would be these are obviously not bred by Engen. Did somebody go to Isla Sauna, poach some DNA, head back out to Malta or wherever this... Because they clearly break out in some Malta-like environment in the film and chase people that we saw all saw videos of that. Um, is is the DNA of those original raptors morphed into something else? These are obviously cool. hybrids or something, you know, and that would explain the colors, yeah. And it would explain why they're kind of raptors, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah, I mean it makes sense, but it's just 
I want to see them in film. I don't want to see them as poorly composited shots on a on a puzzle or on a board <laughs> game or something. You know, like I want to. I, I want to see how, what it looks like in the movie now. I want to see a production still of these guys. A yeah, production re-rendered. still. That's the best. <laughs> that's what that's I want. That's the best way to put it. I feel like it should be that at this point, but I don't know. I mean, the leaks are out there. Like, why not at this point show us what they actually look like? Or at least right, one okay, of them. Okay, fine. Yeah, everybody's yeah. seen this. Everybody's sharing the images. It's time to just reveal it. And Co- you, they could reveal the official Dominion logo at that point too, since that's leaked as well. Colin <laughs> has been like weirdly i understand the pushback and everything you know the delay of the movie and everything but even still i feel like there's an, there's enough content especially now because you've you've already filmed it you're well past filming you're a year past filming almost um you, you're in post-production there is so much like juicy teasing content that he used to do you know like social media wise just drop this yeah. and it was almost like month <clears throat> excuse me it was almost monthly that he would kind of just drop this little, you know, and all it was like was a shadow of the, you know, like the, 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 uh, when we first were like, what the hell is this? And it was the, just the shadow we later found out of the, um, Spinosaurus skeleton in Main Street, you know, but everybody was oh, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. is it a That's new great. dinosaur? Oh, is it, you know, oh, look at the jaw, you know, every, People are going to psychoanalyze anything like your, you know, that, that drops with Jurassic. It's, it's so juicy. And so, yeah, when these things drop, it's kind of like it's exciting for some for others. It's like, uh, we know that this is like, I don't know, there could be better, um, uh, you know, obviously Colin doesn't know that these, you know, this is completely outside of his realm. He doesn't know that these things are dropping or getting leaked or, um, you know, this, this isn't his fault, but like, and it's not necessarily up to him to keep tabs of that sort of stuff to make sure that when it does, oh, okay, now we need to release like an actual behind the scenes production still of an atrociraptor, um, you know, that, that, that you would maybe see in Inter- Entertainment Weekly that would make the rounds, the news rounds, and actually get the proper press. Because um, I don't think this is big enough to like hit like Geek Realm or anything big. Uh, but nobody's really it's it's weird that actually you know he's not keeping as well of tabs even though he shouldn't have to again i go back to that before mm-hmm. he would just kind of drop something before and it's been like quiet all year and you know we're still 10 it makes months. you wonder ta- ta- about the state of the movie right no 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 mm. it's, I, I wouldn't say that no no no. i mean they did release like that five minute preview in imax people like that that looked great Apparently, that's true I, I, I yeah i completely sorry i forgot about that i forgot about that that's a lot that that's was a pretty big, big thing that's, that's, that's pretty big. I I I kind of back step to two spaces, two spaces. But still, as far as the social media side of him teasing specifically, um, that's been a no go. Like he doesn't. I don't know. He hasn't really been on social media at all. So I don't know. Speaking of social media, though, I think we have some social media questions. We do have some social. He is on it today with these social media questions but um Assis you missed one of your own images oh did I oh yeah oh yes I did so we have this a one Carnotaurus so Carnotaurus and uh Allosaurus the Giga that's not a Gigasaur that's an Allosaurus Giga that's the Allosaurus that's, Al- that's the El- guy from the Battle of Bitterrock so yeah that's a, that's not the Giga <laughs> oh yeah so it is see three guys <laughs> we don't know <laughs> uh, at, at two guys I Chris oh, likes dinos. It, it's more like, like lying. It's more like Chris. Chris loves dinos. Ryan loves dinos too. Just maybe Chris oh. knows a little bit more that, about them than Ryan does. Is what My our mistake. is My what mistake. our social names should be. Hmm. Actually, that's what Chris's name should be. Chris likes Chris dinos, but it should be Chris loves dinos. Chris loves yeah. dinos, but so Ryan does likes Ryan. Dinos. <laughs> but Chris knows more about dinos. But I can. Chris, Chris loves dinos. He, he loves dinosaurs. Well, Ryan, what do you got to say about these bad boys? But that's an Allosaurus. Dinosaurs. That's an Allosaurus for sure. And I yeah, think no, you're right. Sorry, that it, just, that's it a... looks like Godzilla, and it made me think that it was the Giga, because that's kind of how it, the Giga looks, right? Yeah, kind of Godzilla-y. Um, and that's yeah, a Allosaurus new Carnotaur cool. as well. Um, I, I missed that because I don't think any <laughs> Carnotaurus made it off the island that was picked. Or wait, wait, wait. Yes, there was. Yes, there was. That was at the end of Dominion. Yes, there was. 
Yeah. Isn't this Broken Horn dude uh, special? Is he the guy from Camp Cretaceous? Is this Toro? We should know this. I should know this? No, we should. As a whole. Oh. As a collective. I don't think Toro lost a... Did he lose a horn? Well, Ben had something to say about it. You know, Ben beat the shit out of Toro. He's so oh, proud yeah, of he that. Did, dude. He is so proud of that. Dude, that's yeah. a cool thing. It's a cool thing to do. I, I put that on my Instagram bio. It's full canon. A... It's full thing. canon, guys. <laughs> full canon. Dude, this this guy looks like he has Some a scar on his face, serious. man. This could be Toro. <laughs> I don't know, cause it's got a, he seems to have a darker skin than I yeah. thought I saw. Like a, it's like he's got like a black skin with the red but marks. Toro got burned. burned. He in got charred. Yeah. Camp Cretaceous, right? They they kept burning him. <laughs> <laughs> they kept burning him. They did. Uh, I don't know if it looks like he's because it doesn't look like it's like burnt skin. It just looks like it's a color choice. Well, sure. if, you know, once you get third degree, it burns once, right? You know, because like I feel like time. he'd be like charred up, like two face looking. This <laughs> heal over time. <laughs> yeah, he looks pretty healthy to me. Like he looks, <laughs> he's a healthy boy, except for the broken horn. I don't know. No, it's not Toro. I'm looking at the picture right it's now. Good looking Carno. Scars though. are all different. Is it the Carno from uh, the End of Fallen Kingdom though? Not because that sure. would make sense, right? It could be. Yeah, it's only one, I, right? And I feel like even the Allosaurus render is like kind of going back to the because. The battle at Big Rock design changed from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom version. That there was like a there was like a junior version, juvenile version. I think we say, saw maybe an adult version, but mm-hmm. the adult version in Battle of Big Rock was definitely more like menacing, had like some like more sharper features. The mean guy. This looks yeah. more like it's like the Dominion, which I hope it's just like maybe this is a Dom- or not a Dominion, a Fallen Kingdom render. Because this doesn't, maybe it is the Battle of Big Rock version. But I think like, it's more Battle of Big Rock, just off first glance. Maybe I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I mean, it still looks cool. I yeah, just thought, cool. I just thought like the Battle of Big Rock version. At least seeing it in film, and that's the other thing too. Is like these renders are always like a little bit different than how you see it in film, obviously. But like the Rexy, she still looks a little weird, right? And like we've all complimented how in the footage that we've seen um the opening scene that she looks like rexy like she's got the dark circles around her eyes and i kid you not like she actually does like there's more features to her that give her that classic jurassic look that people have been like that mm-hmm. people were like noticeably like oh yes finally she looks so good and that person was me so <laughs> there we go anyway there it is the voice It's a great transition time to transition to. This is such a bad transition compared to the one Cease did, but we had some. We have some uh, questions sent in on Twitter. So uh, last time we just compiled questions out of the ether from emails, from comments on videos, but these are real questions. And the first one is a very, very exciting one. One that I'm I think we could spend a whole podcast on. This is from our boy Yaroslav. He says, "I love." Now get ready for this. This is a big one. How do you think they were able to drive the research trailers through a narrow forest slash jungle in the Lost World Jurassic Park? Eddie was the one driving it. Do you think that'll be answered in Dominion? Now, no, because boom! Lost sucks. I love this question. <laughs> what a question! Like, aside from <laughs> it being answered in Dominion, the joke, like, I, <laughs> like, hundred percent, they're gonna open the movie with that. But I, um, this is a really good point. So you you see them, bre- you see them traveling from the boat you know you see them in a in a valley driving across a grassy valley in the, with the trailers and the two jeeps a deep dive i love it da, 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 and then you just see them pull up on a cliff face da, 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 da. and they're yeah. just they're just at the top of a cliff in the clearing surrounded by dense jungle and everyone and every always time asks they're in the jungle surrounding the trailers this is a question it's everyone's super been thick Ryan, yeah. it's super thick jungle how'd they get there well here's the how thing As a, did i'm they? a professional in the field i can literally talk about this talk about it as a guy who's been in armored vehicles, going through very, very thick forests, <laughs> all you need is a little bit of little bit of path. And we know that it's a research facility. There's probably an old beaten path. If you can get your guy on that, you're good to go. Simple answer. So you think Eddie kind solved. of mapped the island out, found a jungle path, managed to managed to get? Because remember, they're high up. Yeah. They're very high up. Probably, at that point. yeah. He's got the satellite readings for sure. I got one. I one up on you, Aziz. As a person who oh has actually been inside the trailers. Oh, I have too, friendo. The lost I have we all world. have. Yes. <laughs> I can personally tell you that um, lengthwise, it's. I mean, they are long, even with the connector. It, it is long, but 
it's amazing what the back trailer how tightly that like when you watch when you watch like long semi trucks and they and they go around a corner and they have to t- and they have to take like the left you know the two lanes in order to get that it's really not that much space but like it's crazy how physics i don't know how axles work to be able to Science. to get it to to flow in the same angle that the that the first trailer is moving so i don't think that even you know there may have been like a few and and, and there's a whole possibility too that like they could have just cut down a few trees like you know uh, yeah like there's a whole portion burn down half the island be- you know, visually sh- shown, and that was it's before Sarah up. would have been there to be like, "You can't do that," you know, and <laughs> and Eddie would have been like, "Smoking, Sarah, like I've got these trailers. What do you want me to do?" Um, but so an interesting thought is: look at the Mercedes Jeep when Eddie's in the high hide. That's a big jungle road. That's what I'm and saying. <laughs> that yeah. high hide is not too far from where the trailers are parked. But when we see Ian Malcolm running through the jungle. He's getting smacked by tree, by like foliage and trees. He's taking a shortcut. It's, he's taking not a thick path, but yeah, I guess he's taking. He's, a shortcut. he's taking his own path. He's a trailblazer. He took a shortcut. So I think, yeah, for sure. I think there's a road there. There's obviously a road leading up to it. We haven't seen the road, and that this is a fun I guess question. you never know if <laughs> this is the best question. This is fun. Uh, this is a fun question. You, you never know if like part, we know so much of the Lost World was deleted, like deleted scenes. We know there was so much material, even just conversational material between the people that ended up on the cutting room floor. And it, it makes you wonder, like, would even these small bits that were unnecessary, like, would they show them kind of just turning in? You know how in Jurassic Park, there's uh, there was like one behind the scenes where you see the jungle explorers, the tour vehicles actually come un- from underground, from behind the yeah, visitor heard center. About this. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of answers where they're stored, where they start, where it begins. Underground Same garage. thing for this. I wonder if there's a tiny bit where the trailers actually drive up onto the cliff and they yeah. exit the jungle road. And like, It'd be cool know, if like Eddie's driving driving the shows the shot and he's like you know the windows are getting a little foggy and he's just like got a component to handle everything and then malcolm comes up to the front component like the front cabin where he's driving and it's a little bumpy and he just is like you know where you're going and he's like and he's like yeah gps shows the old access roads from the map and they're you know some of them are a little grown over but you know Boom. That's all legit you, as hell. Like that's all you need. Like ten seconds of content to be like, okay, they're taking some of the access roads, might need to weave in and out. You know, Malcolm's mm-hmm. like, you know where you're going. Eddie's like, Yep, I've got the technology to do it. Answer solved. And you know solved. that they talked about it. And I love, it. I love it. I love it. I want to see Eddie behind the wheel too. Yeah. Like behind the wheel of those trailers. I want to see like trailers. what um 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 Malcolm's daughter, Kelly. Kelly. Kelly, thank you, Kelly, Kelly, K- Kelly, K- K- Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly. Um, <laughs> I want to see like where she was hiding the entire time and like how that ride was for her. Like especially she, she like spook the hell out of Eddie because if he was the only one in the trailers, <laughs> <laughs> he's like driving. He's so focused and he keeps hearing this noise behind him. He's like, what the fuck is this island haunted? She's like, got a piece so on? bad and she's like creeping up behind him. <laughs> And like oh. he hears like just the like latch like so they go click of the bathroom he like kind of turns around and but then like <laughs> turns back and was like huh you know nothing he's locked in now he's yeah. dead <laughs> but then it shows her in the bathroom trying to sit down as he's driving and it's just a nightmare and she's trying to go to the bathroom she's finally in there <laughs> after being stuck in a closet hiding out for so long but now she's trying these are all deleted scenes from yeah Facebook, exactly right? and this... now she's trying to finally go to the bathroom and Eddie is hitting like the bumpiest parts of the road. <laughs> yeah by this point he's tired and he's stressed as well they've had a long he boat care ride all. where he couldn't sleep he's finally got to the island it was a nightmare trying to get the trailers off the off the boat in the mud on the sound oh my god you great cre- great that was, that was a fun question yeah Very i think fun. all Fantastic. future questions should be lost world based and should be ridiculous like this that was a ridiculous <laughs> question i love it that was great that was awesome. i love that thank you Yaroslav. okay so <laughs> dilly dilly uh realistically are we thinking thanksgiving ish for a first trailer and then super bowl for the second so with dominion that kind of mm-hmm. makes sense right with dominion out mm-hmm. summer 2022 yep that's they're gonna follow the, the other ones yeah I think it would be the same. I think around Thanksgiving, maybe Christmas, a little bit later. And then Super Bowl, I think there'll be a Super Bowl trailer. They'd probably buy that Absolutely. Every year. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Um, Too easy. Okay, great question, but not really focused on Lost World, so a bit not great. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. There's loads of questions here. 
Ah. <laughs> uh, Siaka, I think I pronounced that right. You get to canonize one piece of non canon material. What oh, is I it? Love For this me, already. it's always Scan Command. <laughs> yes. Oh, baby. That's a fucking great question. That's a and deep also, Scan Command. I like that. That's very deep. <laughs> Good That's for you, fan. buddy. That's deep fan level. Um, wow, this is a hard one. What would one, you guys dude. go for? What would you canonize? Uh, Non-canon material, what would you canonize? This is I'm, tough. There's not like a whole lot of non-canon material, though. Like, Well, as far as I'm aware, amount, all of them are, are non-canonized, except for some reason Jurassic Park, uh, the game, and Camp Cretaceous. I was going to say, like, the Telltale, there, was some, there were some cool elements of it. Yeah, yeah. Like, the whole kind of, you know... It, it, uh, I don't know because like so many people were all for years asked like did anybody go back and get the can did anybody go get you know what's the can where's the can and you know Steven had to finally be like no the can is just it got buried in the mud and we showed that and that's what that was supposed to mean um, but kind of having like you know going back for those samples I don't know that story was kind of cool in some elements but they definitely planned that. I remember there was an interview where Colin said it was always something in his pocket for a potential sequel, but it was never utilized. Yep, I got it. It was in the, it was in the documentaries. Hands down, I know what would be canon. If it's not, exactly if it's not already canon, <clears throat> classic PlayStation Lost World video game. Dude, I was thinking the same. <laughs> yeah, I was not thinking that. The <laughs> intro, like the video, like the raptor. You know, you don't see anything. You just see a you just see a camera running through the forest and like on a trail. Where but are hear, they? But you that hear in the background. That was so oh. cool to me as a kid. And the map with the yeah. like the the blips on for showing. Dude, you guys are you guys are insane. You guys are missing the one piece of thing, which I'm surprised none of you guys have mentioned since you guys are so obsessed with Lost World. Trespasser. Oh. oh fuck yeah, Trespasser. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the answer, boys. That Fuck has yeah. to be. That's absolutely it. It's in my head. It's canon, dude. Hundred percent. I love that. I love the storyline and that stuff. All the little bits and bobs with John Hammond. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it kind of should be canon. Like it doesn't Criminal, interrupt the movies in any way. It doesn't change any of the story. It exactly. just expands on the story with the voice of John Hammond. Like it's kind of real. And Derek uh, Davis has done such a good job compiling that into a thing. It's incredible. I still listen to that stuff every now and then. Jurassic Time, man. It's incredible. Nails it. And he's yeah. dug up even audio that wasn't in the game. It was like in 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 Incredible. Uh, like I guess deleted levels and things like that in the beta yeah. versions of the game. My God, yeah, no, it should be canon because at the end of the day, Anne didn't change anything on the island either. No, she just Nothing. happened to be there. She yeah. didn't manipulate anything. She didn't explode anything. She just, <laughs> she just walked she just through. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, great. It, it's got to be Trespasser or Lost World, mm-hmm. Jurassic Park like PSX game um, just because of how cool that is I'm trying to think of something else maybe like Dino Defender would be fun <laughs> that'd be such a strange one <laughs> to Canada Chaos Attack the hybrid yeah <laughs> would it be Park Builder for you at least the Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder DS game or whatever it was no game dude no game. I, I think legitimately though if I had to pick a JP3 thing it would probably be nothing actually nothing yeah nothing I, I, I just trespass that comes to mind or that Raptor comic where they're flying helicopters that's mm. pretty cool. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. I think it would be. I think it had to be trespasser because it's yeah, not like. I think that's the, but then, the number one thing. Cannon's a fun question because who is the cannon queen and where does she? Where's her lair? You know, like where's this, who decides the cannon? The right. Cannon, is it universal? Do they have a? It's just everybody has know. their own cannon. Yeah. It's a tough one, but that was a great question. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, not specific to the lost world, but we made it into. A I lost turned world it. Question, we so, made it into yeah. lost world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good question. That's actually a really fun idea. Yeah, these are fun. These are this is cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so Raptor King asks: Will Toro return? Will we see Spino from two thousand one that tried to kill Doctor Grant with bite marks on neck? And then any chance of Buck and Doe from Lost World, even if possible, Fawn as fully grown unknown if he still has any connections to his parents since likely independence. Wait, 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 wait. <sighs> what? 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 Um, what was the last one? That was a little difficult to read, but will Toro return, and will we see the 2001 Spinosaurus? Uh, Toro, possibly. Like, so, did, yeah, again, does that go back to Fallen Kingdom? That was dude that, could be Toro. Was that him in, in, in California? Who knows? Because, like, again, yeah, I didn't see any... It? I mean, like, you know, the coloration of the, the, the black and the red looked great. I don't know if it was as black as, as this render... 
that we're seeing for Dominion, but I feel like either way, they could retroactively make it. They, they could just make it, make it so. Oh, this is the one from. They could just say it. Is yeah, even if it open? hasn't. Yeah, got exactly. Because I mean, everybody knows that T Rexes every year they shed their skin and then they leave their exoskeleton <laughs> and they grow new skin. So it would That's have grown out for burns. But like, exactly. I don't know. Either way, like, I didn't. You know, nothing screams that these that either of the Carnos were burned. So. Um, I think I feel like Toro is probably Cretaceous canon. Not you know, obviously it's all canon, but Cretaceous world only. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I like the that second part sense. of this question. I, like I, in the same way, I don't think we'll see the Scorpius Rex again no. because that was more of a Camp Cretaceous. Right. Thing. There's, I mean, there's. It's safe to say that there was more than one Carnotaurus on the island, probably multiple. Mm-hmm. So. You know, uh, just because we saw, you know, we're seeing one in, you know, in 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 Cretaceous and the others in the film, like it's 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 not necessarily the same. So um, could it be? I don't know. But they didn't do, a, in my opinion, well enough job of signify. Uh, I, I think the whole Toro Burnage thing came after Fallen Kingdom, so they had already, you know, there was already this Carnotaurus that was rendered, and then, in, you know, if they decided yeah. that, oh yeah, this is the same dinosaur, but in Cretaceous, which is previous to fallen kingdom we're gonna burn the hell out of him that that wasn't really probably poorly you know you could have done that to any other carnotaurus and just called it toro and yeah you know and let's assume that isla nublar's jurassic world had more than one carno i guess which sucks for poor toro because if he did die on the island poor guy got burned twice like (laughs) so (laughs) Oh boy! Uh, yeah, and that might not be over for him. It depends where season four goes. But in regards to will we see the two thousand one Spinosaurus again? I think we will in season in Camp four. Cretaceous. Yeah, yeah, I think we're gonna go to sauna, so I think we'll probably see it. It'd be weird if we went to sauna and didn't see the Spino. That'd be strange. But like, I mean, obviously the 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 Rex is still alive, so the Spino could still be alive. But didn't we? Didn't wasn't there like something that said or like assumed that the Spino skeleton was in fact jp3 spino i think it wasn't actually i think it came out recently it wasn't who decided i mean who decided it's visually that? i don't know it's definitely not the JP3 yeah the heads spino. are different with the the head's different the sail was totally different i know it's a skeleton i guess i don't know how the sail like do the bones go all the way up the sail i don't who know knows? I'm, yeah chris ain't here yeah, so they do. this is a kind of a pocket yeah so they ryan do? says they do so there we yeah, go the, the sails the sails have like huge large bones so it wasn't the one from jp3 for sure on on Isla Nublar's Jurassic World because it to- it wasn't the same it didn't look right really right? hmm okay yeah I'll have to go back I don't think so all right well then maybe I maybe so. maybe it's still alive don't do my spinal I think we're gonna see it in Camp Cretaceous but okay so Matt hit uh, that was that was a good question so Matt hit Hicks asks um, do you think we'll be getting any more characters from the first three films as a surprise and he said also and thanks for such a great podcast been here since the start oh yeah oh gee respect respect thank you Matt um. I think there is a prime opportunity for Joseph Maslow to reprise his role as Tim Murphy. That's been something that was always... Tim and Lex were always rumoured to be in... You know in Jurassic Park 4... They've always been tossed around here and there. Yep. Tossed around. There was a whole script where Lex was the lead for a, for a short period of time. And there was rumours that Kira Knightley... Was yeah, I remember that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it was just strange. But I think if they're going to surprise us with anyone, it very may, may, be, may well be Tim Murphy. That'd be um, so cool. Or, you know, of course, Mr. <laughs> Paul Kirby. God, because can you imagine? If there was some sort of Dominion nod to, like, uh, Kirby Paintel Plus, he's just I think still I in would, the mall. I would rip my shirt in half in the cinema and just scream happiness. All you need I don't is even a tin can so in the background that says Kirby. Kirby Paintel? Yeah. Wow, like dude, Paintel. wow. Okay. You know, like like Laura Dern is remodeling after her divorce, of course. Um, yes, of course. Her house, and she's painting, repainting the walls, and there's some Kirby paint. He's gone. Well, he's she, gone nationwide she could have by this got point. A free bathroom from Mr. Paul Kirby. His dinosaur. F- if you ever need a kitchen or a- <laughs> his dinosaur fa- like fame, f- uh, in- he was infamous from the dinosaur incident. So now he's nationwide. It's actually good for business. So <laughs> <laughs> he survived dinosaur attacks. Island. It's just got fake pictures of him like on the island fighting dinosaurs in the shop. You know, like in Kirby paint <laughs> You can get his signature, you know. Um, I think another character that would make sense would be Sarah Harding. Yeah, where's she at? Where is Ob- she at? Obviously, you can't afford to have Julianne Moore just for a cameo. 
That's it's too big a name. We would have heard it's something. It's an insult to Julianne Moore. It's Wouldn't it be awesome too if like Malcolm was the one that could co- that could keep a consistent relationship throughout the years instead of showing us yet again that another lead character couldn't keep you know, it's like is this how is this how the world works like Sam or like Grant and Ellie can't obviously like be together by JP3. So, you know, nobody knows for sure if if uh, Malcolm is still with Sarah, but Malcolm's a playboy. Wouldn't it be nice to see if Sarah and him are still like by, you know, got each other's backs and by each other's side, like 20, dude, it, that would be incredible. 20 something years later. I mean, it, Cause you're be it, out of all the people you'd expect Malcolm not to, you know, he's already had two how many, incidents it, of nearly dying. He went to an Island to save her. Exactly. The second Island. Yeah. Went to the Island to save her and nearly losing his daughter. He, it would be amazing to see him still it would with com- Sarah. It would be a complete insult to the Lost World if they weren't still together. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, yeah. like having Grant and Ellie be separate wasn't so much an insult to Jurassic Park because they weren't as much, you know, like they were still figuring things out, right? Uh, yeah. It would just be dope. I hope it's still a thing. I think Dude, everyone and wants Kelly it, as well. Having the three of them have That'd some cool sort too. of like appearance cool in the I, I think would be a really nice nod. Mm-hmm. Um, for sure. Because Malcolm's in it the whole time, right? So, you know, where's his wife? What's he doing? Is he with her? Where's Kelly? Yeah, exactly. Oh, if Malcolm's in the entire movie, there's no way they're not going to bring it up. There's no way. Oh, God. I hope he, even if he just mentions it, even if he just says, you know, something about like, Sarah or Kelly. Oh, man. It's going to be huge. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. He's going to say it like that too with a stutter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be a great note. That was a good question, Matt. Thank you. And thank you for listening um, since the beginning. Yeah, this yeah. So podcast cool. has been all over the place. Um, <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of questions about Dominion and the trailer, which we've kind of gone over when we think. Dilly kind of answered that in his own question. Thanksgiving and Super Bowl, man. Uh, so what do you all think of Biosyn and hopefully more paleo-accurate looking dinosaurs being in Dominion? Uh, Dope. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, has it been confirmed that Biosyn is in Dominion? Yeah. yeah, so they confirmed it within the announcement for the actor playing Dodgson. So it's not it's name. not the Cretaceous Malt what is it called? The Manticore. Manticore. So like no. why they're not Biosyn in, in Cretaceous you know, you're throwing us another like what the hell? They probably like, will be by the time season four rolls. Maybe out. that's their like, you know, every you know, their 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 alias name. You know, like maybe call him something else because yeah. Dominion yeah. got delayed. Yeah, it's 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 actually Biasin, but you know they're going by an alias Malta Core so that they don't you know they can fly under the radar. Um. Anyway, yeah, it, cool to have Biasin because that's been a part of the novels and the lore uh, since the beginning, and um, you know even though it wasn't directly said in Jurassic Park, it you know we all knew, but, yeah, you know that it was Biasin essentially. For, and Dachshund, you know, obviously that makes sense. So to be able to, like, confirm and tie that, like, officially in the films, uh, in the franchise, is, is nice. And to be able to, like, see, um, you know, like, if we kind of get this, like, you know, like, ah, the ooh and ah of, like, what the scientists of at least Jurassic Park were doing, you know, a.k.a. InGen. Um, but to see, like, kind of what these scientists are doing on the bias inside is going to be interesting and cool. Like if it's, if they've all kind of got this woo mindset that woo now seems to be backtracking on, which is, you know, there are no rules. I can play God in what, you know, in whichever way I know how, but now, you know, woo at the end of dominion or fallen kingdom kind of saw how that was playing out, you know, and how that was falling into the wrong hands. It would be interesting to see now with his science being open source to bias in now, having a group of scientists who lack the same moral, you know, moral empathy and things that Wu did, and maybe even worse, uh, you know, maybe they're just like, you know, normal scientists who actually do have a moral conscience, but like, you know, to be able to like be playing with these things and create a Trociraptor, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's, it's going to be interesting and cool to see what exactly is on Biasin's agenda. Um, well, that's exactly another question is, is what do you guys think Dodgson and Biasin's ultimate agenda is in the film? Um, I don't know. What well, have they been doing? Since that's 93? the thing. I think Ryan's on it. Like, they obviously are gonna they're gonna be the villainous kind of side of it. It makes sense. Dodgson was the villain, mm-hmm. um, and you know, they they were always jealous of John Hammond's success and being able to to get there faster. So, what are they gonna do when they finally have that power, that genetic power? 
Are they going to create dinosaur fighting rings? Are they going to sell experiences with dinosaurs? Are they going to have these habitats where they can... Dinosaurs are caged off, but they're in the wild, and you know you can pay to go and hunt one. Exactly. That's the kind of realistic world, I would presume, people having these species in the... Like, people having this technology in, in the wrong hands what would they do they profit off it how do you profit off something like that you you go hunt it you pay people pay to go and experience it it's the most uh, logical step from having a park yeah yeah totally is yeah. colin i mean he pretty much has painted that picture out since the beginning of like what would a world be like of you know corporately ran dinosaur you know like if, if it was life if it was like a livestock corporation like you would have dino burgers and you would be able to oh, wow yeah you would be able to also create like uh you know think about like the the hunger you know thinking you know corporations thinking about a hunger crisis thing but then you think about the humanitarian side of like how that would essentially work and then there's domesticating triceratops to be agricultural um you know but like I think the whole play of this is going to play is going to be like, oh, we have these like think of how it could be a better world because we could use these animals for not only like agriculture and meat, but like you know uh, the venom of a velociraptor of a Dilophosaurus can actually like help solve paralysis issues or you know mm-hmm. c- cancer. You know, it's like it's like, it's like extracting something from a pufferfish and we're using the same you know ex- you know science to study it for medical. So it's like, I think there's going to be like this, oh, we can do so much. But behind the scenes, there's going to be a much more like sinister side of CD underbelly. You know, whether it's, it. whether it's financial, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever. But I think it's going to be, again, what, what are we willing to do to these creatures to get what we want out of them, you know, on a corporate level? So if we're domesticating mm. these beasts, but like, you can't really domesticate a triceratops no matter what you do to their like brain chemistry. You know, maybe you actually make them super aggressive and violent. Now you've created this whole thing of like, I don't know. So like you, it's like Malcolm's thing could come true where you're just like creating this like ticking time bomb and it's going to blow up. It, you know, obviously we know it's not going to go and in, engine's not going to come out on top of this. And it's going to be really interesting to see how they are both introduced and like essentially see it what come crashing down because this is the final installment of the Jurassic world franchise, or are we going to go into a fourth, you know? So it's like, so it's an interesting thought, like in dominion, you we've already seen through behind the scenes pictures and things that there's some sort of underground market going on in the location of Malta, right? right. You see the dinosaurs in cages. You saw the compies, you saw the dinosaur that had the mask on. Is that, are we going to see this seedy underbelly, maybe market where you can buy a freaking dinosaur and then something goes wrong do they let them out like in the lost world where they let them out on the island do they do something because chris pratt and barry are there you know oh, yeah, owen and barry do they let yeah. these dinosaurs out and then does that lead to what the you know the atrociraptors running through malta the streets of malta does that lead to that and then it just becomes this big global issue at that point because either sabotage or like you said ticking time bomb it's not going to last forever whatever they're doing I would be One supp- dinosaur fight goes wrong. Dinosaurs get out, kills the crowd. They're out. Right. Especially the the bigger species, you know. Yeah, exactly. I think that there's going to be some sort of painted picture. I think the black market in this film is going to be painted because that was already a, that was already a huge part of the auction, right? At the end of Fallen yeah. Kingdom, like those were all black market people, and you know, and they're going to paint the picture of like who these people are, like oh, the Russian, um, um, you know, like collector of sorts of of both military gear and this and that and you know and then you've got like your fine arts people but who want to just collect for you know an allosaurus for a for a like rooster cage fighting thing down in arizona like that's what these animals are like and i think biasin is going to play into that you know obviously secretly they're going to probably outsource some of these things um for the right price of course um because we're probably not going to enter into a situation where like any of this is regulated. Any of this is legal. Like they wanted to kill the dinosaurs on the Island. So now that there are going to be a few of them in the world, like they're trying to their best just to round them up. Right. So it's like all of it is still going to be like, you know, and I'm sure Biasin has this idea, but whether it's going to be like, you know, 
the world knows about it yet probably not it's probably just like you know dodson's grant like this is the always been the plan blah 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 blah, blah since the beginning what we can do for the world and you know you know but obviously they're working I mean, very covert maybe uh maybe other companies other organizations other people have this technology now and they're they're doing all the bad stuff maybe dodson has changed i don't think so i think he's you know he was let down in the first movie yeah. over 25 years ago so i think he's going to be really bad now but imagine if he was trying to turn a corner he was trying to do good for the world with the technology that he has acquired similar technology because he didn't he wasn't able to poach it but maybe at some point in time he went to sauna and poached some stuff but maybe he's trying to do some good with the world and it leads to something bad we just get another hammond in a sense. I, yeah maybe maybe yeah it would, i mean that would obviously be like a nice little or I don't know if it'd be nice, but like an interesting twist, everybody going into it thinking, especially the fans thinking, oh, Dodson, you son of a bitch. What have you been up to this whole time? You know, <laughs> but then to find out that like he's been trying to do good with it or like turned a corner, you know, for whatever reason. Um, it's a really interesting question. And I think the Dodson one, we haven't seen much of it other than the announcement of him being in it. Really excited to see how they handle that character. It's going to be cool. Yeah, for sure. So we have one more question. We have, um, what is your opinion on there being movies beyond Dominion? Are you fine with it? Do you want a series to go a different route, i.e. a TV show? Uh, I'm sure a better time to ask is after the film's release, but I'm curious if you have opinions on this. What do you guys think? Uh, Prequel series of just the foundation of the park. That's, I think, just a short... which park? Of the the first park with John Hammond. So younger John Hammond, just a quick miniseries, eight episodes, done. That's it. That's all I care about yep. right now. Some of the deaths on New Blah. Yep, why not? Some, the some workers, cover ups. The staff. Some John weird, Hammond going yep. through it. John Hammond being a bad dude sometimes here and there. Why not? Lawyers coming in. Give me a cool Dulcian, drama. Uh, not Dolphin. Uh, Gennaro cameo. <laughs> so I have like no idea where this gym. is going to go in the future. I, I, I have to see the movie first. I don't know. I don't even know where I'd want it to go. Well, Frank Marshall's already confirmed that there's going to be new. There's going to be more something after dominion like he said it's the start of a new era you know we now live in a jurassic world so there's probably going to be uh dino disease well there's probably going to be a jurassic world 4 right but they're probably gonna there's no way there's else. not yeah like jurassic universe <laughs> <laughs> jurassic, jurassic x, multiverse like jason x in space maybe <laughs> jurassic what if um, uh, I think they're definitely. We know that there's going to be, or there's supposed to be, a Amblin Entertainment live action TV show, I about either that, yeah. Peacock or Netflix. We know that was announced at some point. Obviously delayed for COVID. Dominion delayed, so it's probably delayed too. I imagine the TV show is what's supposed to follow Dominion. We know uh, that Wanda I, Wise, right? Is, is is being looked at? Chris mentioned him. I think one of the previous yeah, episodes. There was some comment about the Wanda Wise being eyed to lead future installments. So obviously she's a new character in Dominion. We haven't seen anything of her yet, other than I believe that's her. It's supposed to be with her Chris in one Pratt of the shots the with Chris forests. Pratt, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So I don't know. I, I think, uh, yeah, I think they're trying to, they probably have already established what they want to do after this. I definitely think there's going to be more movies. Well, I, I, personally, I think they should do small movies. They should have small budgets and they should do isolated stories. They should get John Krasinski in. They should get, you know, directors that like to do those kind of movies, like mm-hmm. A Quiet Place, to do a Jurassic but a story that's kind of isolated within the Jurassic universe, not this big world building thing. It's hard I think to go that's from what I'd like to see. To hear, though. It's hard to go from bigger to smaller with these type of movies though. No, absolutely. But I guess if Dominion's established this world where there's dinosaurs everywhere, I don't know how it ends, but if there's all these pockets of different dinosaurs across the world, like we don't need to see it all. We yeah. can have stories told within that world. Yeah. Dino human raptors. I think you're, I think they're cleverly kind of playing with the whole, notion of that obviously with camp cretaceous this is like the first kind of outside the film branch series of, of course of any kind that we've gotten um and just in the past you know since game of thrones like that's and how production can now be handled in a series format um you know especially in the past few years with like disney and star wars um the mandalorian like if mm-hmm. you treat it in a mandalorian aspect where you have a high production obviously battle of big rock type quality right like we know it can be done in short episodes it's going to cost a few million but if the content is is in production is like there the consume you know obviously the audience is going to soak that up and going to love that but choose your stories right choose your content right uh the technology though is absolutely hands down there capable of doing it it's whether or not the studios want to fork out the money i think though if anything 
uh, series have shown that you can have a high production and get like critically acclaimed um, uh, attention essentially towards these series. If you do it right, you know, the story is one thing, but you don't want it to look like crap. Um, And, you know, you can throw it on HBO, you can throw it on Netflix, you can throw it on Paramount plus and have, uh, have it look fantastic. So yeah, uh, I, movies for sure there's jurassic like we said next to fast and the furious especially when it comes to toys um merchandise you no way universal is is not gonna you know milk this until people are like and i don't see a time ever (laughs) when kids don't want dinosaur content like this you know in pop culture like as long as there are kids around i think jurassic survives and because like they, mm-hmm. that only you know keeps the fire going obviously as adults you know we're we're original you know we've got that but like we already know that jurassic world has built this huge fan base just in the jurassic world you know franchise some of which have not even still seen the original series so it's like yep you can keep creating jurassic content and keep building your audience and it's gonna you know uh it's only getting yeah i think as well we can't have another lull 14 year dead zone like that'll never happen jp3 no. and it, so. no you're right it can't really happen now anyway because there's so much going on camp cretaceous there's going to be a season of camp cretaceous that happens after dominion and i, I believe that it's going to wrap up camp cretaceous but there's people are going to be hungry for more for sure and uh they would be silly to let that die but that by all accounts they're not there's lots of plans and i'm sure frank's a good producer a very uh studio loved producer so he's there's plans there's some big stuff coming i think like are you guys and, uh, are you guys familiar sorry to like are you guys familiar with avatar uh the, the last <laughs> heard of avatar 5 made me cry not sorry not <laughs> no not james cameron's avatar um the oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah the airbender series no absolutely Somewhat, not a no. little bit i'm a big fan huge fan of that series it's amazing Ar- arguably one of the best animated shows of all time but like they're building this like live action series version of it on Netflix now, but they've actually built a studio based off of the franchise called Avatar Studios with like the original creators because it's got such a huge fan base following. And I don't, I don't know like argue you know compared to Star Wars or or Jurassic, but like when you have that well of a follow like you know to create like I'm so, I, so I'm like you know if you have an Avatar Studios like I'm not going to be surprised if soon there's like a you know, Amber Rock Studios or something like, you know, something cleverly or crafted that's specifically Jurassic content because like they're built, like you start building this big of a world, this like the franchise starts seeding out into this many things. Like you've got to have a like separate yeah, studio for it, side studio, you know, so like I'm not going to be, you know, let's convince them to call it the Outpost, but I won't be surprised if it's like Outpost a- Studios, Amber Rock or like, Amber Mind Studio, or I don't know, something silly. It's an interesting thought, and it makes you wonder, you know, is Colin going to stay with the franchise, or is he going to, once he's done Dominion, is he going to go and do some of the other other projects that he has on his... I'm sure as, like, a side, you know, as Steven kind of oversaw things, I'm sure Colin will kind of always have that. Um, Yeah. But it's going to be handed off in one form or another, in, in another down the road anyway like if they start doing this like kind of mandalorian aspect where like you know john favreau directed like the first couple of them but then it was like you know why um um directed one and then um bryce dallas howard directed one and um like robert rodriguez directed one you know so you get some you get some of those like names you're talking about like john krasinski and things like that like people who could like actually have like a cool lower budget like horror aspect to it but do an episode of jurassic that's like battle at big rock but like 50 minutes long hour long could be an anthology yeah. series yeah i'd, I'd take uh yeah like almost netflix 50 minute sh- you'd call it a short but it feels like a movie for jurassic just telling stories uh with chosen directors i mean it'd be great if it was full length i don't know why 50 minutes but you know that could work there are there is ways they could take it if we now are living post dominion in a jurassic world and there's dinosaurs everywhere and different people have different setups and stuff there's so many stories to tell you could do it you could world. do a whole series of like not have a not have a lead actor but you could bring a bring in a ton of like main 
um, actors that are in individual side story episodes. So it's like an eight episode series, but it's different locations around the world where families or individuals have come into a dinosaur encounter. It's like close encounters of the dinosaur kind, but it's like every person's individual story played out into an individual episode. So it's like, you've got battle at big rock. It's like, you know, this camp setting, whatever, span that out into an hour long. That's out episode one. Episode two is down in like Baja, Mexico or something. And it's like that, it's like that intro reel that we saw before Jurassic world came out of like the surfers on the beach getting picked up by the pteranodons. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a whole episode about the fly, like flying birds picking on some surfers yeah. or something like that. You know, they're all linked, but it's all individual like yeah. stories told. Yeah. I think that could be really good. I think one thing is they should definitely do like a high budget video game that continues the story in one way or another. You can play part of the story. You can have one voice day. actors come back. And then I think also, uh, I personally, it's got to go horror. I want to see some darkness. I want to see some, yeah, I want to see like, you know, rate it 15 or something. I don't know. <laughs> Not quite something... 17, but 15. No, oh, I'm thinking, you, <laughs> I'm, UK still, I'm still in the UK mindset. It's 12, 12, a 15, 18, you know, and then band, box of the band. I mean, uh, I guess we have NC 17, but that's like, that's really bad. That's above R. And so I don't know technically like what age limit is R. I think it's, I think it's technically if you're under 17 or 18, you need like parental supervision. But it's so different in America as it is to in the UK. <laughs> it's yeah. so weird. They have yeah, twelve PG parental guidance. Yeah, so that's like kids' films that are a little bit like sad. Yeah, and then you got <laughs> maybe Fox and the Hound is a PG. <laughs> yeah, the dog dies. In one Bambi one. is a PG. Why do you die? <laughs> um, um, and then G. Yeah. No, great questions, uh, guys. Thank you so much for submitting questions. And uh, let, uh, when we got more questions than I thought we would, uh, a lot of them were very similar, you know, in regards to Dominion. So hopefully we answered them. But keep sending in questions for the podcast, guys. Um, thank you so much for joining. This has been a fun one. Yeah, this good great. times. Great to talk Jurassic. I have no idea what's going on in the world, but of Jurassic, but it was great to kind of like catch up on it. I can't wait to yeah. talk to Ryan in a year from now. Yeah. Tune in next <laughs> August 2022 after Dominion's release to get my review. Yeah. <laughs> Hyped up. Uh, how many days until Dominion do we know? 10 months. Mm. <laughs> that was quick. That's how many Very days. quick on that. Right That's how many days, 10 months. 10 months. Wow. Uh, it's like, right? Like maybe nine months in a few weeks. Because isn't, isn't it beginning of June? I don't I think know. there is an actual countdown on, I don't think, I know, on JurassicOutpost.com. I don't know if you guys have been on that website. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, God. Is there a I countdown love that on book. our website? I love They're, that They have a countdown so on there. Those guys put a countdown in. Those guys, eh? Uh, 292 days wow. until Jurassic Park 6. That's says. incredible. <laughs> it's, it's less than a year, guys. I can't wait. I'm very excited. 292? Nine he's putting that's, it in his calendar that, yeah that's nine and a half months oh, damn he was so on it I had to google that on it just to make sure <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, this is fr- I, from this point forward it's gonna be really exciting yeah man we're getting close Capitaceous in December Dominion trailers around then yep we're gonna really start to see there's already marketing hitting stores which is Dominion in themed Kinder Surprise Dominion. eggs mm-hmm you know graphics so we're very we're getting very close to knowing a lot more about this movie and knowing the visual style of this movie which um i mean judging by the logo and stuff seems to be going down that classic amber look which is very exciting i hope they keep it yeah i hope they do too um ryan thank you assis thank you so much man Mm -hmm. yeah thanks for having me uh, you know usually we end the podcast with chris making some weird comment and then laughing (laughs) and i kind of fade it out there we haven't got chris today so i guess it's a traditional ending very good thank you for listening goodbye bye guys bye (laughs) (laughs) Uh, good afternoon good evening and good night